Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to my updated houseplant slash new house tour. Now, as a lot of you may or may not know, I have recently moved house, which does mean I've had to downsize a lot of my plant collection. I do still have some, you know, choice pieces here, but generally speaking, there are a lot less plants than what they used to be. I'd rather just keep it minimal for a little while so that I can focus on other things and, you know, my plants won't suffer as a result. So for now, I may keep this a little bit more on the minimal side but that's not to say I won't get some more plants in later so let me just slowly pan around and show you kind of what we got going on as I say we have just moved in so there is you know stuff in places but that is the reason for the echo there's actually not a great deal of furniture in here I wouldn't say obviously we've got quite a lot of plants down there we don't really have anything in the kitchen area here that I have there's some uh, ficus plastica there so they're fake and what else do we have Oh no, hang on, we have him up there, we have Gus. Gus actually made it over here, aren't you pleased? I did actually prune Gus back before he came here because he was just ridiculous, so right now he almost looks like he did in the last houseplant tour I did. So he doesn't look like he's grown, but he really, really has, just trust me on that. First thing I have here is this wonderful Caladium White Queen. Let me just have a little grab. It's looking okay, actually. I had to cut it back a little bit. It did have some brown tips where I just wasn't able to kind of get it watered quick enough with everything going on, but it's okay. We're drooping a little bit on this side and I don't know why I have watered it. I don't know if it's just time for those leaves to go or anything else because it, it does get a reasonable amount of light in this room. This room. I don't know if it looks like it on camera, but it is way, way, way lighter than the previous flat where I lived. So I don't know. I'm not too worried. It is looking very, very healthy on the parts that you can see. If I just show you there, it is looking beautiful. So I'm not too worried. Perhaps they are just old leaves. It's a lovely little well done card there. So here I have my, what is it called? Ashenanthus mamaratus, I think. Oh, I hope that's right. Um, just chilling on here at the minute. I don't necessarily have anywhere to hang her yet. So she is chilling on here. I've watered her recently, but she feels a bit droopy. Well, that's gone bone dry again. So I may check to see if she needs any more water because she could be a little bit perkier. I don't really know if I'm going to keep her here or move her. Everything's kind of up in the air a little bit at the minute. So I will see what happens. But for now, this plant lives here. Oh, and if uh, no one has seen this before, can you just look at that and just acknowledge the amazingness that is those leaves literally i love it moving on we have the thor matophyllum african fantasy i nearly forgot what it was uh, this was previously described as a philodendron however now we know it is not it is a completely different type of plant i got this from i think kind of from holland a while ago it's made it over it is uh it's skipped the declutter or the anti-hole whatever you like to call it uh, we're still fighting a little bit of a gnat problem. I think now that I've moved and I have less plants, I should be able to deal with the gnat problem much better than I have been. So honestly, I'm not incredibly concerned about it because it's massively reduced, you know, just from moving here and, you know, downsizing the collection and everything else. So at the minute, yes, I have a gnat problem. You may see tape in things, but I'm, I'm not too worried. So that, you know what that, on camera there, that looks like I could put something so much larger there. So I may, I may sell this Thormata film on my shop perhaps and get something a little bit larger for this space because I actually think it would fill the space much nicer. So might do that, I'm not really sure. This is my wonderful new little couch, but you know, it's okay. There's only two of us, it's not a problem. If I go over here, I have a wonderful little new home card my parents got me. The crocodile fern is still here, still looking okay. Has a little bit of brown tippage. Again, probably just, if I'm honest, probably from the neglect of doing all the business side of stuff recently. All my plants have suffered a little bit. Um, nothing, you know, too crazy, but I am seeing a little bit of signs of my previous neglect of them. So I am very, very glad that I've downsized and I can take better care of these plants. So, Moving on, oh, there's an Instagram notification. We'll swipe that off. Sorry if you heard that vibrate. And here we have the wonderful, the beautiful, the coveted Monstera Albo Borzigiana, AKA variegated Monstera. I would just like to show you some of these leaves. Let me just sit on this couch because it's quite comfy. Look at this, please. Have you seen anything more amazing? What else do I have? I have this leaf here. 
they're kind of, I don't think I have any 100% um, sectoral leaves. A lot of them are like sectoral with some, you know, speckled variegation, but it's very, very beautiful. I think, I think she may need a water. I'm not a million percent. This is one of the new leaves here. I think I have, let me have a look. I have a smaller new leaf here that's quite nice as well. I have, oh, that one's nice. I haven't seen that one before. I have quite a few. It's There's very, very, very good levels of variegation throughout, which you can probably see. There, I mean, I think this here might be one of the greenest leaves that I have. And even then that's still looking, you know, pretty decent. Down there, they've all got reasonable amount of white. This one here, again, a lot of white. They're generally looking very, very good. I'm happy. I'm not about to prune anything off this because I don't want to stunt the growth or anything. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. But I do think at some point I may have to pin these to the top of the moss pole. And uh, I do think she might need a water. She's looking a little bit droopy. So I think I'm gonna tackle that as soon as I've finished filming. Uh, I don't wanna show you too much of the outside because it's a bit of a building site, but that's my balcony. and. That there is Manchester, which you probably can't see. Let me have a little look. There you go. There's some of Manchester looking wonderful. So moving on from the coveted uh, variegated monster, we do have the also coveted Biob with some rare plants in. Now you will see a few things in this orb and I'm just gonna kind of give you a mini tour of the orb, explain the updates, explain what I've done, you know, what's been going on and just generally what's going on currently. So if I bend down, you may notice straight away, or straight away, you will notice this tape here. I did have, when I planted this orb, I did have a gnat that must have, you know, flown in as I had the orb open. I don't know how long I was planting that. I think it was nearly an hour. So at some point when I was planting that orb, clearly a gnat has gone in. And unfortunately, it does only take one to produce a significant problem. So I'm currently fighting those. I'm considering getting some of these guys. Yes, that is a ladybird. I uh, haven't fully decided yet what to do. I'm kind of still, you know, I pay this orb a lot of attention every day and I'm still wondering, you know, what I should really do for the pest control. I know some people have said things about springtails, but honestly, they're unsightly. I, I can't look at them. Uh, a few people have suggested ladybugs, so I don't know if that's actually the way to go with all of this. So I'm kind of just working it out as I go. But apart from that, uh, there was a King Anthurium here. You will see him in a little bit. Nothing bad has happened to him. It's more the obliqua here in the center, if you do not already know and you have not been looking at my Instagram, the obliqua in the center here is actually growing significantly. So I wanted to just take the opportunity now just to remove some of the juvenile plants around him because I mean, that's the reason for this whole biob. So I don't want to interfere with the obliqua in any way. So I've removed the Anthurium vichii, there was a Begonia pavonina here and oh, there was Begonia amphioxus back there, but maybe it wasn't the right time to plant it. So it's kind of suffered a little bit and it's dropped some leaves. So I have removed it in an attempt to try and grow the, the, um, the roots a little bit stronger. So that's not in there currently. There is another one at the back though. Let me just get onto my feet. Sorry, it's going to be very hard to show you pretty much anything in here. There, there's an amphioxus there. There is my unknown Anthurium hybrid that has a new leaf on the left. It did have a larger one, but it mysteriously turned yellow. So I'm not sure what that was about, but I think it might have just been, you know, time for that leaf to go, so to speak. Uh, the Epipremnoides, I probably can't show you that other than just looking straight through the glass. But if you look at the back there, the Epipremnoides has a new leaf coming. It's pretty pleased to be in there, I think. It's generally very, very perky. It always looks pretty damn good, to be honest. On from that, we have the Queen Anthurium, and honestly, literally nothing has happened <laughs> from the Queen Anthurium. It's exactly the same. I wouldn't say it's got better. I wouldn't say it's got worse. It's possible that those brown spots have got a little bit worse. Um, no growth from the stump there. Generally, just no change, you know, nothing to report. Now, you will see a couple of things in here. Just don't mind the ladybug. Uh, there is a thing just there at the edge of my fingertip that looks a little bit like a Q-tip. It isn't. Uh, it's actually a piece of oblique runner that I'm propagating inside the orb. I do have another one um, via tissue culture actually growing through the next room. So I'll show you that in a little bit as well. I am trying to document the process of a runner growing inside the orb versus a runner growing in tissue culture, but I haven't had much time to film the updates with everything going on, but I am working on that. So, you know, stay tuned for that. 
And the star of the show, of course, is the Monstera Oblique. And I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but you should be able to see there should be a um, a shoot here that's coming up that's maybe about an inch tall and then after that there is a shoot that starts from where my finger is now and goes to where the tip of my finger is there and both of these shoots I'm pleased to announce are new leaves so it looks like we've solved the equation so to speak and the oblique actually thinks you know it's in the rainforest or whatever have you and it's actually growing so that's just literally the best news you could ever ask for um, a couple of things of concern, although they're not massively concerning, is that that right hand leaf there does appear to be going yellow um, and it looks like we're going to lose that leaf. I imagine that, you know, this leaf might not be too long after that. However, because it's got new leaves coming out, I'm just trying not to stress about it and I'm trying to just, you know, be cool about it and just accept that, you know, it is growing, it's happy. Maybe those leaves are just, you know, at the end of their sell by date or whatever have you. So I'm not trying to panic about anything in there. I think generally it's fine. Obviously there is the gnat problem, but I'm on it, I'm solving it. I think it'll be fine. To follow on, we have one of two absolutely stunning philodendron Florida ghosts. These are one of my favorite types of philodendron, so much so that I actually have two. I have another one right there. Um, they're absolutely beautiful. Again, I know I rattle on about these all the time, but if you do not already know, the leaves on a philodendron Florida ghost start off white and they will fade to green over time. That wonderful pink bud there is a new leaf forming. There will be a beautiful white, you know, angel looking leaf come out of that. And then over time it will fade to green just like the rest of them. Uh, it has to be said that it does take a little bit of time before they go green, so it's not like they're going to go green in a week. It does seem to take quite a while, actually. I would probably say, I don't know, maybe three or four weeks, maybe a whole month. Right, up from that, we have the wonderful, simplistic, bold, beautiful Philodendron Scandens. This one is making a really, really nice job of trailing all the way down my little TV stand, so I'm super happy about that. Finally, I have trailing plants and I have something for them to trail down. So I just, I couldn't be happier about it. I think this might be the most, maybe it's the most common plant in my collection. I'm not sure, but it is actually one of my favorites just because it is that simple. I love heart-shaped leaves and the fact that this one trails is just literally, it's wonderful. Um, along from that, I have the quite new, uh, what is it? Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess, Crimson Queen. Oh gosh, I can't remember which one it is. I think it's Crimson Princess. Um, here we have a wonderful little red leaf coming in there. No blooms yet, but I'm hopeful. I can only assume that that is where the blooms come from. Uh, I'm not schooled in Hoya. This is my first Hoya, so I don't really know what I'm doing. I've just kind of placed her up here. So yeah, I don't know if she's happy there or not. I mean, it's, it's quite a lot of light she's getting. I don't know if it looks like a lot of light on camera, but honestly, it is a lot of light, so. Fingers crossed for her. I would love her to bloom, but I don't know if she is going to get enough light in order to do that. However, next to her, we have the most wonderful philodendron micans. Now this is very similar to this philodendron here, only this one here is velvet and it is lovely. It has some lovely burgundy undersides on the leaves. Again, just, it's trailing hearts and only this one is velvet, so it's even better. So at the minute, that's all I have on this TV stand. I did kind of dial it back as much as possible. I mean, I'm saying that there's three plants on there. And underneath, we have the Philodendron Florida Beauty. Now this one is interesting, to be honest. If you remember, this was my old leaf here with uh, you know, a patch of variegation. Now this one, I believe, I think this is done, you know, processing, so to speak, and it's kind of halfway in between green, halfway in between yellow. Like, I'm pretty sure that's yellow because, you know, this is green. I think there is a slight bit of variation at the top of there. I have noticed with these plants, similar to a Florida ghost, the variegation does seem to take a long time to creep in. Like, it's not immediately obvious once the leaf comes out, whether it's variegated or not. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Um, tell me in the comments if you find the same thing with yours. I may have to chop this. It depends on how green this is because this leaf here, I mean, the variegation is pretty much non-existent. So I may have to get a little bit scissor happy and see what happens because you probably can't see on the stem. The stem of that, you can see that there's, you know, half green, half yellow. 
um, but I'm not sure what's going to happen from here on out, so stay tuned, but I may have to chop it, I'm not really sure. Next up, we have the absolutely stunning Monstera Thai Constellation. Let me just move around a little bit. It's got bigger, obviously. It's not as small as what it once was. Uh, this is its newest leaf, the lovely little white streak there. When this was unfurling, I thought it was going to be whiter than what it actually is. Um, I'm not too displeased about it. What I really want, to be honest with you, is I want splits. I want it to fenestrate. I'm done waiting and that is what I want. So I'm kind of just praying with every fiber of my being that the next leaf that comes through is actually, you know, fenestrated. But, you know, we will have to see. It's still beautiful as it is, but at the end of the day, I think I've had this plant for the majority of a year and because my last place was so dark, I just, you know, these things just have not happened at the speed that they maybe should have. So I'm just gonna keep feeding it. We'll see what happens. You know, pray for me for the next leaf. And on from that, this is a, probably a better demonstration of a Florida ghost because I can show you the leaves in the different states. That one's kind of white. That's kind of turning. That's like a smaller, more juvenile leaf because they do change in shape as they get mature. Um, I have taken some cuttings, so if you see any weird stumpy bits, that is why. Uh, this is another leaf here that's kind of turning green. And obviously those are the leaves that are already green. So that is my second ghost. Oh, and there's a new leaf coming out here that's just desperate to just crawl on out. So that are all the plants in my living room. I know that's crazy because I used to have so many. Don't worry, I have more. <laughs> but generally speaking, I've tried to keep this a lot more minimal than what it was. Um, I just, I stopped enjoying myself being just completely cluttered with plants. So it's nice to dial it back because you know your girl gonna get more plants anyway, right? Like it's pretty obvious that I'm gonna get some new ones. Honestly, I'm enjoying having to maintenance my plants much less, so that is kind of awesome as well. Now, before I show you into that room that is clearly amazing, I will just explain to you very quickly what this table is. This used to have all my billetai on it in the last um, flat that I lived in. However, I honestly think it's just too dark here to have that. So unless I have some sort of grow light solution for the bottom, I, I don't know if I can put anything here. So I'm not really sure what I'm doing with that at the minute. It is kind of just a table that doesn't mean anything, so to speak. So yeah, I don't really know what I'm gonna do with that. Down there to the right, we have two bathrooms. There's a bedroom there and a bedroom there. But this wonderful paradise here is my new office. And I am literally the luckiest girl in the world to have this as my office. I could not be happier. I hope that the, uh, the phone isn't gonna make that too dark there. But this is my computer. This is where I do a lot of my work. Uh, both for nine to five work or for rare plant shop stuff or you know anything else actually while i'm on the subject of the rare plant shop we are restocking tonight at 8 p.m bst so that's actually the same uh time of day that i did my first rare plant launch uh two weeks ago now so if you haven't already seen the instagram posts i'm relaunching tonight with like a whole new shop full of stock so Feel free to go and look at that if you like. The link should be in the bottom to that, so you know, don't waste your time doing it now. Just do it a bit later. But yes, in four hours from this upload, I will have done a complete and utter restock. So if you want to check that out, please do. Because I may or may not have Monstera Epipremnoides, and I'm very, very happy to have found it. So please do go and check that out. So I do have my Philodendron Golden Dragon here. He did not you know, escape my clutches. However, I don't think I can necessarily keep him because as you can probably tell, there's no real place for him. He's just sat on the floor and I don't really like that. So, you know, I may still have to swap him for something else, uh, but we'll see. This is my wonderful, what is it? It's a Philodendron McDowell. This leaf has suffered a little bit from just being, you know, passed from flat to flat. It's okay, but it could really do with a new leaf, but it is growing a new leaf. Let's see if I can show you here. It is growing one, but very, very slowly. Here I have my wonderful Anthurium clarinervium, and it is looking fine. It's just, it's got packed in a box and the blooms are literally just facing the wrong way. Right, I'm going to do my best to take you through these shelves. This one at the top here is my Philodendron bilitae crossed with Philodendron atapapuense. That means that it inherits these wonderful burgundy backed leaves, although they don't look too burgundy backed. Uh, but it's very, very pretty. It's not necessarily going to live there. I've just had to put it there for now because I know it's a philodendron and I know it can handle it. And honestly, this room is way brighter than what it's coming off on camera. So not worried about that. 
Let me just scoop around here because it's difficult to get into. This is my, what is it? Philodendron Melanochrysum crossed with Philodendron Bericosum, which should mean that we do have some red backing, but honestly, it seems to disappear with maturity. So that's obviously the Melanochrysum side kicking in, in terms of the hybrids. Very, very pretty, not really much growth, but you know, as I say, I've lived somewhere super dark, so it doesn't really surprise me. This here is Begonia Amphioxus. Is it going to focus? I don't know. Let me try and rotate it. Begonia Amphioxus from the Biorb. It's not looking incredible. As I say, the roots were just not good. This actually snapped off a larger piece, so I'm currently trying to root it in water. I know that's a lot of water there, but it was the only place where there's a root node, so, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Here is my second Monstera Thai constellation, and honestly, the variegation isn't that strong on it, but I'm not too fussed, to be honest. You know, I have one with good variegation. As I say, it's the variegation is chaotic anyway, so it's not, you know, th there could be more variegation in the newer leaves. It just, it really depends. It's almost random, so I'm not losing any sleep over it, but he's grown a little bit. He has got bigger. I got him, I think when I got him, he was a plug, and he was only about you know, 10 centimeters tall or something. So he's done pretty well to get to that size. Right, what have we got on this shelf? Oh, there's some interesting stuff. So this here is the wonderful Anthurium vicii uh, from the Biorb. As I said before, I took him out just because I didn't want him getting in the way of the wonderful Monstera Oblica. So he is chilling here. Haven't noticed any serious signs of stress yet, but honestly, I'm prepared for it because the Biorb was a very different environment to what it's now in. So we will see what happens. This is my Monstera Standaliana Berigata, and it is looking pretty good. These are two new leaves. It's interesting to me that these are still yellow and you know, the older leaves are more of a white variegation. So I'm kind of interested to see how that pans out. It could be the, the lights that they're under. I'm a little bit concerned about that, but I'm still kind of running tests to see if the LEDs are actually doing anything to the variegation because I'm scared that it's reverting my plants, but I'm not 100% sure. So maybe it is, maybe it isn't. So if I move along, this is the wonderful Monstera Dubai. Now I do have a plank of wood for this. It's on my desk at work. I still haven't got around to uh, fitting it yet. So I must get around and do that, but Really, there's been no growth. I think you can probably see a little spike at the top there. Other than that, no growth at all. Uh, by now, you're probably wondering what this is in the back. I will just pick this up quickest I can. Now this, this is uh, very interesting and you probably can't get a good shot of this. Uh, so I apologize, I'll do my best. Hang on, let me just have a little look. So this is a Monstera Oblica, chunk of runner. As you can see, the runner has been cut there and there is a root coming from the runner and that is a little shoot. Now, I haven't seen much growth on this other than the root. The shoots have been like this for a little while now, so not, you know, it's not dead. It's not really growing. It's in a safe place. Like this is completely sterile inside this tube. So please do not worry about that. Um, but the growth hormone it's in just doesn't seem to be necessarily working. So that might need looked at at some point, but I'll just plop. It back there. Underneath that, I have the absolutely gorgeous Alocasia Dragon Scale. It's just, I mean, look at that, seriously. Look at this though, this is even better. Look at that. Oh, just the best veining in the world. Um, when I got it given to me, the leaves, some of them were a little bit, you know, misshapen and a bit like this, but I'm just waiting for new leaves to come in. Like I'm not impatient for it or anything i just keep checking on it every so often and this that you can see here the lovely big fat leaf is a new leaf so i'm pretty chuffed about that as we say in england moving down we have the burly marks variegata this is suffering a little bit but i think i mean this leaf is ancient so i suspect it's just dying off of old age um i do have some new growth though it's plenty of variegation some are half and half some are completely white Overall on the plant, I think there's a good spread, so I'm pretty happy with that. This is, what is this? Philodendron Tenue, it is a stump. As soon as I got this, the leaves just decided they hated me and just dropped off. So I'm still waiting for this to grow. Um, can I grab this? Because this one's slightly interesting. This is my Monstera Castanianum variegata. It has been known as the Monstera Peru. I'm not even sure which one it is supposed to be anymore. This is what had me concerned about the LED lights and this, like the the leaf before this has dropped off, it's actually gone totally crispy now. And I think it was just, you know, it's time to go. 
but the leaf before this leaf was super super variegated and um, I mean obviously this one kind of isn't so I'm very very likely to cut this back I'm pretty sure that the new leaf is not going to be very variegated either so what I may do is I may just cut this back and you know take a cutting propagate this separately and see what happens because I mean this is variegation don't get me wrong but this is not the same as this do you know what I'm saying like I need to preserve that and that is a classic example of when you should preserve your variegation if you notice it you know starting to change if you've got a node which mine it definitely does and hold this up here see that there there's a bit of an aerial root there that's where you can cut you can cut beneath that aerial root and take your new piece of plant propagate it separately leave the variegated piece to grow uh, sorry the variegated you know the rest of the plant to grow and you should be good and then if the other plant you know picks up in variegation then then you've got two right what do we have here we still have the unknown um hybrid possibly that did not fit in the biob because it's just a bit of a bendy mess at the minute um this could either be philodendron gloriosum or philodendron glorious now i can't tell which one it is it looks a little bit long to be a gloriosum but i'm still not 100 percent I can't decide if I'm honest with you. Um, this is the Begonia pavonina. Yes, it's got stuff all over it. It's come out of the biob. It's not a pest, I promise you. That is literally just white bits off moss. Um, to be honest, as soon as this one came out of the biob, that leaf there just completely did a number on me and completely wilted. So I don't know if it was just the shock of leaving the orb because these leaves were grown, you know, 100% in the orb. I don't really know. I'm not seeing stress in any of the other plants, but this one is showing signs of stress from removing it. So I will keep you up to date on that. But as I say, that is not a pest. Those are literally just white bits of moss that I just haven't had time to remove. This, however, is doing okay. This is another Begonia amphioxus. I have about three, if anybody's curious. There's some new growth behind the leaf there, and that leaf itself is just oh, it's super awesome. I don't know if I can get a better look. I can only go so far with this gimbal. There, look at that. I mean, oh my goodness, how amazing. Let's put that back. So I'm kind of trying to grow that to maturity a little bit more as well. And honestly, when these root enough, they'll go straight back in the biob. It's just, you know, they haven't for now. Down here, we have a couple of very interesting plants. The first one is a Philodendron Florida Ghost, a little cutting from my main plant. And I want to show you this because, hang on, let me move around. This interests me a lot. If you look here, you can see what looks like variegation on some parts of the plant. I don't know how easy it's going to be to see. You might not be able to see it. Tell me if you do see what I'm looking at there, but it's in a couple of places. I think it's just me being, you know, an idiot and it's not actually going to show anything weird, but I, I just thought that was a bit strange. I've never seen it happen with any of my ghosts, so we shall see there. I move back around this monstera is uh, kind of getting me in the bum a little bit that is my monstera panathi partita uh it's not for everyone you know probably because of this i'm sorry if that triggers you but oh, that's my computer i'm sorry guys um but it's it's very beautiful this monstera doesn't show any holes it's more just um splits so if you're into that and you don't mind the very interesting growth pattern then that could be one for you sorry i will go back over to my shelf and this is the absolutely stunning Aglaonema pictum tricolor. Again, this did not make it into the orb. It's got some yellowing of this old leaf. It's been like that for ages. It hasn't um, persevered across the leaf. It's just stayed where it was. And it has a new leaf that is just coming out now. I mean, oh, look at that, man. They're absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. At the minute, it's in moss, and it, I, I admit it shouldn't be in moss, I don't think, but that's where it is at the minute, and honestly, it's growing and it's happy, so I'm not in a hurry to change that. Beneath that, we have the wonderful Alocasia Black Velvet. Now, this one, as you may notice, got a little leggy. I honestly blame the colour of the old lights. I don't think they were the right ones, hence I have also changed them. This was just getting very leggy. Like, I don't think a Black Velvet should look like this, so... Mm. We'll see what happens. I'm probably going to trim, you know, these big long ones. There's new leaves coming in literally as we speak. So, woo! They are most cool. So, I'll keep an eye on that, but I may have to trim those big leaves down because it just looks silly. You know, these things are supposed to grow pretty compact and that one isn't. So, I will just leave that for now. 
Uh, this is my Philodendron Billetai. I have a leaf here that is very, very unwell. I don't know what's happened to him. It's just something I noticed when I got here. I have sprayed it for pests. I can't see any pests, so I'm not really sure what that's about. But he's just under here. I probably will just cut this leaf off as soon as it goes a bit more yellow. And then I guess he can stay under here for a while, to be honest. Uh, down here, there is literally just another Begonia Amphioxus in there. That one did come straight out of the biob, so I've kind of... Because it was the most substantial cutting, I've tried to put it in there to reduce the shock levels of it coming out of the orb. So I guess we'll see what happens with that as well. Um, you know what, this Billetai could be just trying to be like his friend over here because this Billetai here is gorgeous. This one is variegated. Uh, let me see what this... Let me just show you this. I'm pretty sure by the time you see this, this may be for sale on my shop, guys. But let me tell you now, it is extremely, extremely, extremely rare specimen. So if you'd like to get your hands on this, then please do go and have a look at my shop. But it's beautiful. I'll give you a proper tour of it now. There's a leaf there. There's a leaf there. It has had a leaf chopped from the base. Where is the chopped leaf? Where is the chopped leaf? I think it was on this side. Yeah, it was on this side, but it was literally all yellow. Um, so I had to chop that back because that was just too much. But there is another leaf clearly growing quite quite a good rate actually coming out there so it's got quite a good few leaves on it and the variegation is pretty good as I say you can probably see in the stem there if you can see that there is literally half and half so it's got some really good genes beautiful look at that and that is it for my wonderful office. It's a pleasure to work in here. Not that I've been in here very long, but it's an absolute pleasure to work in here. I love my new lights. They, they definitely look better, but it just depends on if they're any better for the plants. So I will kind of see what happens with that. But that is all the plants I have in here, which means that there may or may not be not a lot of plants left. I'll quickly show you in here because this, without me entering the room, this is my new bathroom. It's very nice indeed. Wonderful. I'll close that. And then I'll take you into the guest bedroom of which, honestly, there's not a lot in here at all. As I say, I am still unpacking, so there is stuff in places. But this is my own personal Philodendron Gloriosum. It suffered a little bit from the move. I think it did have spider mites in the last place. I've sprayed the crap out of it and there's not, you know, there's nothing on it. So I guess now it's just a case of waiting for the new leaf to come and, you know, replace this one and it will look a lot better. And if I just show you over here, I'll try my best to walk around. There's not a lot of space around the bed. This is my Alocasia Zabrina. And if I just sit down and show you how big it is, that's quite big, you know. Like it used to be maybe about that high off the, uh, the bottom of the pot. If you've seen my last house plant tour, you'll know that. It really did shoot up this spring. Like it's the plant that I've had that's grown more than any other plant. I'm really quite impressed with it. I think it's going to be an absolute brute once it's finished growing, so I'm pretty happy about that. I think my dad was here a couple of days ago and he may or may not have pulled the blind down on one of the leaves. However, I think one of the leaves was kind of on its way out. Uh, it's not that bad, is it? <laughs> but yeah, I think the blind has come down the leaves and snapped it, so that's a bit sad, but I'm not, I'm not worried. Look at that. Wonderful. Literally, that is it for that room. There is nothing else in that room in the minute because as I say, it's a guest room. And obviously there's not a lot, to be honest, there's not in any of the rooms because we are just moving in. We're trying our hardest to get everything kind of sorted out. So there are only two plants in here and these are the last two I have to show you guys. So the first one is my gorgeous Anthurium vitarifolium and his new belt that I think I was bragging about in a video a while ago. Would you like to see his new belt? Because it is impressive, okay? So it starts here right? Eyes on the belt in the center. That one right there that's, you know, swinging away. And look how long this is. Have you seen how long that is? Let me just move back so you can really get an idea of how long that is. I reckon that's about 1.5 meters, maybe. It's a long ass belt. Like, really, it's a long ass belt. I also have some wonderful blooms here as well. Just the best plants, like they're a real statement plant and they just, they don't really take much to look after, to be honest. They'll bloom pretty easy. Same as Clarinervium in lower light. Like you'll get a bloom out of them, no problem if you just plant them well. So I'm loving those. As I say, there is only one new leaf for me, but it's been growing in the dark. So I'm pretty, pretty happy to have the leaf that I have. And the last plant, she made it over. She has been with me since forever. 
is Maestro Manthi Trio Star. Now she has suffered a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Where do we have some? We have some tips here and I've always been really, really proud of not having crispy tips on her. But due to neglect a little bit, admittedly, and, you know, moving house, the business stuff, just everything, she has had a little bit of neglect. But she is fine. I have repotted her. She is in a huge ass um, plant pot. There is a pup coming. Where's the pup? There it is. I don't know if you can see that right there. There is more leaves coming. Generally speaking, she's fine. She just needs a little bit of TLC. She needs some misting. She needs regular watering and she'll be totally a-okay. This leaf is doing something weird. I don't really know why that's happening, but I don't know. She's doing absolutely fine. Oh, I will just show you if I can put this light on here. This is my ensuite right there. So that is kind of the bathroom that sort of leads off the bedroom. Cause I did say I would show you kind of the house as well as, and then if I pan back around, just so you get your bearings, this is the first bathroom I showed you here. This is the second bedroom here. This is my, you know, stupidly large, you know, area where nothing happens, where rubbish happens. Um, this is my kitchen. This is my living room. That is my balcony. And that is my wonderful office that just, every time I look at it, it just looks great. I'm gonna close that though for the humidity. So we'll close that. And that is it. That is the rest of my houseplant tour. I apologize if this was echoey. I apologize if it was rambly, but I feel like I've got a lot to update you guys on just because, you know, I have moved house as well. So this might have been a little bit more of a chatty houseplant tour. I'm very sorry if that's not your thing. Um, I'll have done my best to keep it trimmed, um, but jump cuts aren't necessarily the best thing either. But, you know, what can you do? Yes, thank you very, very much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you liked it even more and you'd like to see any more of my plants or my content, then please hit that subscribe button. As I say, there is another restock on the shop tonight in four hours time from this upload. So 8 p.m. BST on Friday, the 5th of July. That is restock time. Head on over and I will see you next week, I do believe. So thank you very, very much for watching and I will see you next time. Oh, do you want to say bye to the obliqua? There he is. Oh, the next time you see him, he should probably have two actually fully fledged leaves. So let's stay tuned for that. Okay, I'm going to go now. <laughs> I've rambled on long enough and now I have to edit this. So thank you very, very much for watching and I will see you next time, guys. Bye.